The United States enters World War II as a result of Japanese action, so we need to focus our attention on them now. In the 1930s, Japan is actually trying to create an empire in the Pacific. In July of 37, Japan invades China. Despite the fact that the United States was appalled by the action, the leaders of, that, of the government were fo too focused on Europe to take any sort of punitive action in the Far East. The Japanese, however, were purchasing strategic military materials from the United States, like gasoline and scrap iron. And as Japanese imperialism grows, and it grows more ambitious, the United States makes those purchases more difficult. In 1940, Japan becomes a member of the Axis Alliance when it signed a 10-year defensive agreement with Germany and Italy. In the following year, 1941, Japan becomes more aggressive, in fact, in invading what we would call French Indochina, today's Vietnam. In the summer of 1941, the United States government banned the export of aviation gasoline, scrap iron, and other war materials to Japan. Now, on, Gen on December 7, 1941, Japanese airplanes make a surprise attack on American naval bases in, in Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. Of the eight battleships at Pearl Harbor, three were sunk, one was grounded, and four were damaged. A small number of lesser warships were certainly disabled, and approximately 175 planes were destroyed. In total, about 2,300 American soldiers and sailors were killed, and 1,100 were wounded. On that same day, though, Japan's forces were going to invade the Philippines, Guam, the British Crown Colony of Hong Kong, and British-controlled Malay Peninsula, including its port city of Singapore. The day after the attack on Pearl Harbor, President Roosevelt addresses a joint session of Congress, asserting that December 7, 1941 was a date which will live in infamy, and he asks for a declaration of war. Within hours, Congress passes a war resolution with only one dissenting vote. On December 11th, Germany and Italy declared war on the United States, which in turn adopted war resolutions against them as well. And for you trivia buffs, you can you know here's a good trivia question: Name the one country that that Adolf Hitler actually declared war upon, the United States. It's the only one in the list. The attack on Pearl Harbor quickly ended any debate between isolationists and interventionists over foreign policy and united America prepared for war. So for the second time in less than a quarter century, American young men were prepared to serve their nation in another foreign war. Military personnel received the title GI for government issue, and they entered all branches of the military service. In December of 1941, Congress amended the 1940 Selective Training and Service Act by lowering the minimum draft registration to 20 and raising its maximum to 44. Some 9.8 million men would be conscripted into the various branches of the armed forces. Approximately 5 million enlisted voluntarily for military service. By the end of the war, there were, and here's some great numbers, 11 million in the Army. That includes the Air Force, which numbered about 3 million. 4.2 million in the Navy. 675,000 in the Marine Corps. And 250,000 in the Coast Guard. 260,000 women enlisted for non-combat combat duty in all branches of the Armed Forces. In the Army, they were popularly known as the WACs, the Women's Army. Women's Army Corps, and in the Navy they were called the WAVES, the women appointed for voluntary emergency service. The draftees and enlistees received basic training at scores of bases throughout the United States. By the end of the war, approximately 12 million men had gone overseas, of whom 4.7 million engaged in combat duty.